Creating content and building my personal brand has completely transformed my life in just last one year. I've been able to make more money than an average engineer or a lawyer just through branded deals. I've been invited to colleges that I always dreamt of getting into as a college student. I've been able to build a community of 2 lakh people who follow me because of who I am. And most importantly, I was able to build a business on top of it. But it hasn't been all that good since the start. I've been creating content from last four years now. And for the first two years of me creating content, I was only able to build a community of 7,000 people. After producing and posting 600 videos organically on Instagram and YouTube together. And so you might ask Akshat, what changed? What changed was my understanding of two important subjects that is branding and storytelling. Since the day I started reading branding and storytelling, Everything changed for me as a creator. My worldview of how I look at this creator economy and content creation completely changed. So I decided to delete my old Instagram account that had around eight to 9,000 followers and start a new fresh account in February of 2023. And in the last one year or so, I was able to scale this Instagram account from zero to around two lakh followers at the moment. When I sit here today and I reflect and think about why I was so bad at creating content for the first two years, the part of it was because I was just not good enough. I had no idea about how microphones work, how camera works, how framing works, how lighting works. I still suck at it, but I've gotten incrementally better over the last two years. But part of it, which was the most important reason of me failing for the first two years as a creator, was because I was unable to distinguish between what what it means to become a creator and building a brand. What's the differentiating factor between two? And why there are only few creators who stay relevant for decades. And then there are creators who go viral for a month or so, for a year, for two years, and then they go down and then they vanish. And I started reading about it in a lot more detail and depth. And that's one topic that I want to talk about today. And so if you're trying to build your personal brand and want to become a creator, and if you want to stay relevant for decades, you would want to pay attention. So we are going to be talking about what's the difference between being a creator and building a personal brand and then we are going to be talking about what it takes to start your journey of becoming a creator and at the end we are going to be talking about how you should think about transitioning from just being a random creator to building a brand that stay relevant for decades the disclaimer is that this video is not for the real scrollers it's for the people who really want to get a good understanding of what creator economy is how it works and how you should think about it if you are getting yourself into this entire game of building a personal brand. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. Branding as a concept dates back to 2000 BC. It's since then people have started talking about strategies of branding and promoting their products and companies. But it's only after the emergence of social media platforms, the concept of personal branding emerged. Okay, now everybody is talking about personal branding, sub personal branding ke mein baate karte hai, aur sabko lagta hai ki it's a cool thing to do. But a very few people are able to translate the concepts of branding into a personal brand. There is a major difference between becoming a content creator and building a personal brand. See, all personal brands are a result of creating content, but not all content creators build a personal brand. And that's the major difference. You see, branding is about telling stories. Branding is about making your consumers and viewers and customers the part of your journey. Branding is about emotions. There is a reason why thousands of people stand in queue when the iPhone launch to get their hands first on that particular device. Why do you think is it so? Is it because iPhone builds technology that is revolutionary? Yes, yes, it is revolutionary in a sense. But when you think from the utility point of view, there are a lot of other phones. All the phones will give you more or less the same utility. So people do not stand in the queue to just get hands on another phone. They stand in the queue because they want to become the part of the company. They want to become the part of the story. They want to become the part of the culture and that's what the branding is. People understand this up to an extent, but when they start building their personal brand, they completely forget it. They watch a random creator on the internet and they're like, yeah, I'm a content creator, I'm famous, I'm famous, I'm famous. So they just go to Instagram, they record some random bullshit reels and they just become and stay a resource sharing page on Instagram. They copy paste content from the internet. They find some resources, they share it with people. Five YouTube videos, 10 books, 10 songs and then they just stay a creator. They forget about what it essentially takes to build a brand. The thing is that people will always follow you for the value and the resources that you share through your content creation journey or building a personal brand. But people are always going to stay for the stories that you share with them, the inspiration that they seek out of your content. If there is no story, if there is no one big goal that you are trying to achieve as a creator or as a company or as an individual, then there is no personal brand. You are just a resource sharing puppy of the algorithm. A person 
and brand makes and force your viewers to be part of your journey. They're inspired by what they do. They want to look at you every day and they want to listen to what you have to say. It doesn't matter what you have to say, okay? So the concept of niche basically disappears when you think from the personal branding point of view. All the creators that you follow today, all your favorite creators, they talk about anything and everything and you like to listen to it, okay? And those are the only creators who have been relevant for years and years, okay? You think about Tanmay Bed, you think about Ranveer Alabadia, you think about, let's say, Project Takoli, you think about... Uh, Technical Guruji, you talk about tech burner. All these people have been relevant for years and years because you value what they speak. It doesn't matter if they are going to be speaking about tech or they are going to be speaking about fashion or about politics. You just listen to them because you like them as a person. And that's the difference between a normal creator that you watch on Instagram and you forget about that creator after 10 days and the creator that always stays in your mind for decades. Now you have understood the difference between being a creator and building a personal brand. But the most important thing and the fact is that you cannot build a personal brand without being a creator first. So if you're watching this video and if you're not even a creator, then the concept of personal branding doesn't make sense. So let's talk about how you should start and approach your journey of becoming a creator. See, becoming a creator is one of the easiest things if you do it the right way, if you approach it the right way, okay? Good creators never run out of the creative ideas. Good creators don't go to the internet and find what are the viral ideas. Good creators do not go to the internet and they search for the most profitable needs. Niche. There is a way of becoming a creator. It's just about you figuring out what your curiosities are, how you are going to be satisfying and fulfilling that curiosity and then just sharing your journey on the internet with people. There are three main pillars that you need to keep in mind if you really want to become a creator. Pillar number one is a curiosity. See, you cannot become a creator without being curious. All human beings are curious, but people in the generation we live in today are just lazy. They just want to look at other good things. They want to mental masturbate. They want to fantasize their life. And then they just want to watch Netflix, eat junk food, McDonald's, and they just want to sleep. Okay. If you think that you're not curious about anything, that means you are just not even thinking twice before answering this question. As human beings, we are born to be curious. When you're a child, you're curious about everything. You're, you're curious about this microphone. You're curious about the color of it. Why is it black? You're curious about uh, the curtains. You're curious about the wardrobe. You're curious about the light. You're curious about everything, okay? So as an adult, because of distractions, you have you have lost the meaning of being curious, okay? And so if you really think about it, if you really sit down, if you really explore different subjects, you will find there are certain subjects that will peak and hold your curiosity. So you need to figure out first, what are the things that you're curious about? For me, I am curious about marketing, branding, building on the internet, making money, traveling the world, and I'm curious about the concepts of freedom of money, freedom of time, and freedom of location. That's what I am curious about. So everything that I do as a result of it, on my personal brand on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram is the result of that curiosity that I'm chasing. Pillar number two is a defined project or a goal. See, once you're curious about something, you should pick a goal or a project that you would want to work towards. You want to pick a project that you want to get better at every day, okay? For an artist, it could be just to create 10 paintings. For a person who is interested and curious about fitness, the goal could be to get shredded in the next six months. For a person who is a businessman who is curious about building businesses on the internet, the end goal could be to make, let's say, $5,000, $10,000 in a month, right? For me at the start, when I was just starting out as a creator, the only curiosity, the only end goal that I had is that I just want to get better at recording videos because I used to see so many good creators on the internet who were creating art, who were creating good content that inspired me. So I was like, okay, I am not good at communication. I am not confident in speaking in front of camera. So my only North Star was to just get good at speaking in camera and creating content. And after continuous iterations of me recording and posting videos, thousands of videos on the internet in the last four years, now it's effortless for me. Now I can just record the camera, press that button and start recording. But still at some times, I have to retake things, okay? I have to record it on, I have to turn it off, I have to turn it on, I have to turn it off and I have to do it multiple times. But after I get into the flow, it's effortless for me, right? But it has been because of I had a curiosity to chase and I had a North Star goal that I was chasing in the last four years that I just want to get better at recording videos. Number three is share the journey. The major problem that a lot of people face when they're just starting to become a creator, when they are planning this big goal they have of becoming creator and getting one lakh followers on Instagram and they want to get millions of views on their reels is that they do not have enough content ideas, okay? And so what I used to 
thing and that I say to a lot of people is that if you are not getting enough content ideas, that means you are not doing anything cool in real life. Okay. And that's why I told you that you need to have a big North Star goal. The goal could be that, okay, I want to build a business. The goal could be that I want to become a editor. The goal could be that I want to make $10,000 as a designer. And that is the reason why you will see that the lot of creators who are creating these 90 days challenges of me being a video editor and making $10,000 work so well because people want to look at the journey. People are inspired by the journey. People want that person to win because they want to prove to their mediocre mind that I can win as well. That's the reason why sharing your journey on the internet is probably one of the easiest way and most effortless and impactful way of creating content. So if you are trying to start your journey of becoming a creator, there are only three things that you need to keep in mind. You need to have a curiosity that you are interested in, that you want to learn about. What are the subjects that you want to learn about even if you are not getting paid? You need to find that curiosity. Then you need to define a goal or a project and then you need to share that journey of you Achieving that goal every day, step by step with the audience on the internet via videos, via tweets, via LinkedIn, via YouTube, via Instagram, whatever is the platform that you pick. That's all. If you can just do these three things fundamentally, you will become a good creator and you will see a lot of people starting to follow you. But still you will not build the trust with the audience that is required to essentially make money out of becoming a creator. And that is why now we are going to be talking about how to build a personal brand and how to transition from just being a creator to building a personal brand that pay you dividends and gives you the ROI of your energy and time in next few years. See, building a personal brand has a lot that goes into it. And probably I cannot cover everything in this particular video. And that's why I just want to keep it easy, simple for people who are just starting out. And I want to talk about three main pillars of building a personal brand that you should keep in mind while you are progressing in your journey of becoming a creator. Number one is authority. You see, respect and trust can only develop when you are authoritative to somebody, okay? You respect your father because the person is authority in your family. You respect your grandfather, your mother, because they are authoritative figures in your family. You might be respecting me because you look up to me, right? So when it comes about building authority, you need to have your own strong stance, okay? You respect your father because you go to your father and you ask something and your father says no, okay? And he has a very good explanation to it. That's why you respect your father and that's why that person is an authoritative figure to you. So when you're creating content, you need, need to build that authority in one way or another, right? So the part of building an authority is to have a contrarian take, is to have your own strong stance on things. If you someday are saying that creator economy is great and on another day you are saying that creator economy is bad, then you basically are way too malleable. You do not have your strong stance that people can trust you for. So you need to have contrarian takes, okay? And you need to stand, abide, and you need to stand by those takes, okay? For example, for my personal brand, some of the contrarian takes could be networking is a scam or it could be selling is the truth, or it could be course creators are a scam. Or another example of a contrarian idea could be LinkedIn is the worst platform ever. So I'm basically building that authority by talking about things that I find to be true. That's true in my worldview and how I think about the world, okay? If you just keep sharing resources and information, people cannot look at you as an authoritative figure. And if they do not look at you as authority, it's hard to make any sort of transaction. And that is why authority is important. Number two is aspiration and lifestyle. See, to truly build a personal brand, there has to be certain sort of separation between your followers and between who you are. If they do not aspire to live like you, if they do not aspire to have the knowledge that you have, if they do not aspire to live the life that you are living, then there is a disconnect. Believe it or not, whenever you are following a creator, there is certain sense of aspiration that comes into play. Otherwise, the trust that you have built with them, the likeness that you have built for that particular creator fades away. Okay. Now this separation, this aspiration could be in different ways. You might want to look like them. You want to, you might want to have relationships like them. You might want to dress like them. You might want to be uh, as quirky and humorous as them. You might want to build the businesses that that particular creator have, but there has to be a certain sort of aspiration because without aspiration, the likeness and the attachment that you have created with your audience would slowly and gradually fade away. Okay. So the part of you building a brand is that there has to be a certain so sort of separation. There has to be a bandwidth that your followers and consumers and viewers would like to fill. Okay. They would always want to be like you. Okay. And so you always have to get better as a creator. You have to always get better as a brand. Okay. And that is why some of the biggest brands of the world 
always are innovating. They are always getting better. So people always are below them and they aspire to get them. They aspire to become the part of their story. So if as an individual, as a personal brand, as a creator, you are not improving and your followers get here through your content, they one day they would surpass you. Okay, if they are really hard working. So you have to always maintain this gap of aspiration, right? That's how you build a brand. So the second pillar that I want to talk about was this gap. Okay, if you can maintain this gap, then you can build a personal brand that people would trust and they want to be the part of. Pillar number three is share the struggles. See humans connect on much more deeper level in hard times as compared to the good times. That's just evolutionary psychology. The more vulnerable you are on social media, the more mistakes you show on social media, the more you will connect with your audience. And that's why I told you to share your journey. The more journey you share, the more transparent and authentic you are, the more you want to speak like you would speak with your friends, the better connection you would make with these people. Okay, so you need to share your journey, you need to share your struggle. The overall idea is to make them the part of your journey. If they can feel a sense of inspiration, if you can feel a sense of aspiration, if you can feel the sense of a story and they would want to be the part of the story, that's when you have built a brand. It's like as a business creator, if you dance and still people go mad about you, that's when you have built a brand. If as an entrepreneur, you start a t-shirt company and people line up to buy the t-shirt, that's when you have built a brand. Brand yourself to escape mediocrity. Do not remain the creator and feed the algorithms for the sake of it. Do not become the food of algorithms, brand yourself because that is how you actually make real money, build a business, create impact and get the following of people who follow you for who you are as a person. That's all for this video. If you want more videos like these, please like the video, share it with your friends and if you're watching me for the first time, subscribe to the channel. If you like videos like these, you will love my newsletter. The link is in the description. I send one newsletter around business, marketing and growth every Wednesday. It's free to subscribe. So go subscribe the newsletter. That's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.